So let's do some shoulder and arm strengthening in this little flow. Starting with the breath at the top of the mat. Inhaling deeply through the nose and out the nose. Ujjayi breath. Center yourself, ground yourself. Spread the toes into the floor, engage the legs, draw the tailbone down to the earth, draw the navel in, shoulders broad, collarbone smiling, palms face the front. That way you're creating all this opening already into the shoulders. Neck, back of the neck, long. Chin in line with the mat. Breathe. Flow. Inhale, lift into the arms, bend the knees as much as you need to. Exhale to fold. Inhale to rise and in. As you lengthen here, see if you can feel the length and the space that you're creating already within the spine between each vertebrae. Folding down now. So plant the hands into the floor. Okay, wherever you need to go, you might need to bend the knees here and start to actually push the floor away from you. This is already going to start to strengthen the arms, so we're pushing the floor away. Three breaths here, draw the navel in. Beautiful, lower yourself to a plank position and bring the knees down onto the floor. A little bit more strengthening for the shoulders and the arms. Elbows are going to draw back, so this is our modified variation of Chaturanga. So slowly draw the elbows back and leading with the shoulders. See how my body stays in one long line? A lot of people I see just want to dip down here, okay? So keep it all in one long line. Good, inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Inhale again. Exhale, return third round. And exhale, tuck the toes under. We're going to lift back to a plank position. You may like to come by the knees or straighten the legs and lift straight back up. Use the shoulders. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. There's a lot of this going on. Let's keep the shoulders back away. Draw the navel in, lift. Good. Peel back to downward facing dog. Breathe it out. Two breaths. So what a lot of people forget is that when we're moving into a plank position from downward dog, that is actually a lot of strengthening into the arms just there. So sli slowly guide yourself forwards to a plank. See how my arms are on? And then exhale back. Downward dog. There's two more of those. Breathe it in. Shoulders just come over the wrists here. Exhale back. I've also got my fingers spread wide. Third and final. And exhale back. Good, lower yourself to the floor. Untuck the toes and then drop the forearms down to the earth as well. So you want to ensure that your wrists are lined up with your elbows, are lined up with your shoulders. So it's that, that. Not that, not that, not that, not that, but that. From the back, shoulders away from the ears. Draw back and down, open through the shoulder blades through here. And then you've got this pushing action, okay? This pushing action with the forearms, like you're pushing the forearms into the earth, like you're pushing the earth away. Okay, so let's put those three parts together. Forearms, pushing the earth away. Shoulders away from the ears, open through the upper back. See that difference? From sinking to opening. Good, so the knees are underneath the hips if they're not already. And we're just gonna inhale and come forward over the, over the hands. And then exhale to come back. Keep pressing into the forearms here, as well as the wrists. Breathe in and move forward. Breathe out. Backward. Breathe in forward. Breathe out backward. So this is preparation for your forearm balance, okay? We're not going there today. But if you want to add on, you can tuck the toes, lengthen out the legs and apply exactly the same method. Breathe in to move forward, out to move back. Good, 
good. And when you're ready, come down to child's pose. Now tuck the toes. Peel back, sit bones down towards the heels, forward to the floor. Arms relax, shoulders release down toward the floor. Beautiful, release the hands back out in front. Lift back to down dog. We're going to come into side plank, which is another arm and, and shoulder strengthener. And it's a balance as well. But I want to take you into a modified version. If you know the full variation, feel free to come in. Otherwise, lower your left knee to the floor. Ground your right foot into the floor. And keep your left wrist stacking underneath the left shoulder there. And then with this right arm, you can lift it. So you're in effect strengthening the base arm and shoulder that's supporting you and you're opening and lengthening through the top one. Now you can stay here or you can start to fold the arm back and work variations with your binds. So as much shoulder opening as you'd like which is also a nice complement to what we're doing. So we'll do the opposite side in just a moment. Feel free to step up. So if you're rather than bring the knee to the floor is to straighten out that base leg. Side planks and any other variations you are familiar with you can work here. Take one last in-breath. Remember it's the core that's lifting the hips. And then exhale, let's come back down to downward dog. Feel free to flush it out between rounds of the chaturanga. Modified or full version. Knee to the floor. Right foot down, right foot swivels, left arm high. So all the joints here stacking. Good, some of us stepping it up. So some of you with any sort of neck tension, you just want to keep the gaze down towards the base hand. Otherwise, feel free to look ahead or up towards the sky. Last breath in. And exhale, turn the gaze back down. Return the hands, downward dog. Feel free to flush it out. So it's that the vinyasa that we do all the way through that sequence, just come into Anahatasana, your melting heart pose. The, the chaturanga sequence that we do through the sun salutation, right through the practice until we hit the floor, is actually intended to strengthen the arms and the shoulders. Okay? Strengthening those areas of the body are gonna, what are going to get us deeper into the practice with all of our arm balances. So we've prepped for one of those arm balances. Here in your melting heart pose, maybe you can just gaze down to the mat or look forward. Good, so remember the prep up for the forearm balance. <clears throat> We're gonna do a similar thing, but this time we'll use dolphin hands or it's a dolphin, the, the series is a dolphin series, but it's actually hands that we use to headstand in, because it's headstand prep. So interlace the fingers here, just drop the bottom pinky inside the hands. Same position, elbows beneath the shoulders. If you know it, go into it. Tuck your toes under or keep with the knees underneath the hips and inhale forward. And exhale back. Inhaling forward. And we can tuck the toes under. And exhale back. The, the key, really, is to keep it slow. Slow and steady. All too often I see people just rushing through like this. It isn't actually going to build any strength doing that. Not to mention the fact that you can so easily injure yourself doing, doing it that way when we're rushing. It's like in life, if we're rushing, you'll find that you're <laughs> more, more often than not Child's pose when you're finished. More often than not, you'll find that you're injuring yourself, walking into furniture around the house and bruising yourself. When we're rushing and we're not being mindful. I was one of those people actually, before I found yoga, I'd find bruises on me all the time. Wonder how I'd get the bruise. <laughs> walking into desks and doors. Car doors, that was a big one for me. Just, not to say that I don't ever do it anymore, but I certainly wake up with 
Not nearly as many bruises. Good, it's important to rest through your practice. Complementing the heating, strengthening poses that we're doing. So remember we were playing with um, handstand at the very start of the class. We were pressing the hands into the floor from a forward fold. Well, we're going to have a little play, similar kind of method. Tuck toes, peel back to down dog. We're going to play here, but I want you to be really quiet so nobody can hear you. That's for the core and the arm sake. So what we're going to practice doing is jumping to a handstand, but don't see it as a handstand jump. See it as a downward dog jump. Okay, so your arms are on, triceps, biceps, hugging the bones, bend the knees, and you're just going to jump the feet off the floor, but really lightly. Okay, so you're trying to try and bring your heels up to your sit bones. And eventually, you'll be able to bring the hips over the shoulders. But we just play with the jumping concepts for now. One more. Good work. Look forward, step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale to rise. Exhale, fall. Bend, brush and reach to the sky. Hands into prayer. Chair pose. Another beautiful arm strengthener is holding the arms up here in our chair. So hug the muscle into the bone. Shoulders down, away from the ears. Let's bring the hands to prayer. And let's step back to warrior one from here. So back foot into the floor, 45 degrees, lift into the arms. So again, we're strengthening these shoulders. Warrior two, again, another arm and shoulder strengthener. So is our reverse warrior, right hand to the thigh, left to the sky. Let's reverse things. Let's start with warrior one. So you really need to angle that back foot so that your hips are facing the front of the room, okay? The way that you're facing. Unlike warrior two, which is when we face the hips to the side of the room. Keep strengthening the arms. I know this is quite long holds, isn't it? Breathe it in. Now warrior two, back foot reposition so it's in line with the back edge of the mat. Reach the fingers away. Sink deep into the right. Reverse your warrior. Good, and come out, warrior two. Lengthen out the right leg for me. Turn all ten toes to face. And from here, there's another entry point for handstand and some shoulder strengthening work. So let's come to a forward fold. Inhale and lengthen. Exhale and fold. Keep lengthening the spine the whole time. Bring the right hand in beneath you. Press the hand into the floor. So you have that strengthening. So if I was just to sort of let it hang out here, I could, I'd be here. So keep turning the whole arm on, all spread through the fingers, all that energy into the hand. And then lift the opposite arm up to the sky. Twisting open. We're also strengthening the top arm. Breathe it in. Exhale, return the gaze, swap the hands. Same thing, keep the core on, keep the hand pressing into the floor. And the other hand lifting away, like you're pulling the hands away from one another. Return the gaze, return the hands. Before we leave, we'll just peace grip the big toes. Inhale, rise and lengthen. And exhale to fold. Well done, yogis. Let's walk the hands. Framing one of those feet, step it back to downward facing dog and pedal it out. I'm going to try and keep these flows fairly short for you because I'm, I'm mindful of, the, of your time. So let's just work with a shoulder stretch. Take one arm over and behind the opposite, assist the elbow coming in behind, opposite arm reaches back. Couple of breaths. Feel free to forward fold here. 
swapping it over when you're ready. So that was a nice little short snapshot of strengthening the shoulders and arms. Thank you for your requests. Um, also, just wanted to, to add that even when we're really thinking about that particular area that we're strengthening, you'll find that you actually start to strengthen it. So just be mindful throughout your day and notice where you're actually using the arms and strengthening and make sure you keep the core on and the navel drawing into the spine. Thanks everyone. Namaste.